Ah, hello, welcome to Tensile Ground Coffee. A few minutes on ground engineering to enjoy it while having your coffee. Right, continuing on with Ask Andrew. <clears throat> Let's see what we got this week. Uh, oh yeah, it's a good one from uh, Sandy, Sandy Gravel. And she asks, how do we model mechanical stabilization in finite element analysis? Interesting one. One of my favorite topics, mechanical stabilization. First of all, what is it? Well, when you get aggregates interacting with a stabilizing geogrid such as this, you see how it can't uh, rotate. It's held in place pretty well there, so I can move it around like that. If we didn't have the geogrid, the stone will move around all over the place. So the stone is constrained against rotation. So imagine this was an installation and we had a layer for a road or a working platform or a railway and so on. We had lots of other aggregates filling all these apertures and we had a layer above. So we had other stones above this level. So you see that this stone can't rotate very, very much here. This stone interlocks with it, is also constrained against uh, rotation. And there may be another stone above that. They all uh, have their rotation restricted. So what you create is a layer of an aggregate where all the aggregates, all the stones rather, are constrained against rotation. Now if you go back to your fundamental soil mechanics, you'll know that if uh, the stones within the aggregate are constrained against rotation, you'll get a fundamental change in their mechanical properties. They'll actually get a lot stronger. Um, it's one reason why angular particles are stronger than rounded ones, because it's more difficult for them to rotate. But if you wanted to create this in uh, FEA, the problem you've got is that you're modeling the aggregate as a continuum. So you're not getting this effect on the individual aggregate particles. The only way to include that effect in the analysis is to change the mechanical properties of the continuum that is modeling that aggregate. So you need to model, um, in effect, the mechanical stabilization. If you just put in the geogrid as a reinforcement, as a geogrid element, plus the aggregate, you're not going to get that effect. So we've done a lot of work uh, looking into this uh, with large triaxial testing, as you may have seen in a previous ground coffee, and also to develop an FEA model. So let's talk a bit about uh, this. Let's go over to the flip chart, Brian, and uh, talk a bit more about this. So in the, when we uh, test in the large triaxial that uh, we, we saw before, so we have a, um, a cylindrical specimen like that, and in the middle we have a geogrid layer like that. So we're testing the material as a composite, as a mechanically stabilized um, material. When we do a, a triaxial test, so axial strain against a deviatoric stress, Q in the normal way for a triaxial test. Uh, if we do um, an aggregate without geogrid, non-stabilized as we call it, but it's well compacted and dense, we will get uh, something like that, the classic shape of a dense aggregate. We get to a peak strength, then we get to dilation, some softening towards a critical state strength. When we test a mechanically stabilized um, aggregate, what we see is a, a higher strength like that, and we see a, a more ductile behavior until eventually it, uh, it softens or we start to get a rupture of some of the ribs uh, later on. So we get much higher strength and much more ductile uh, behavior. So that is the effect of all those particles being constrained against rotation. You see it manifests itself as a higher shear strength. So how do we put that into an FEA model? Well, we developed our own um, constitutive model called the uh, Tensar Stabilized Soil Model. TSSM, um, and we represent the behavior in terms of failure envelopes, because that is the most important part of the behavior to, to uh, account for, uh, is the increase in strength. So the particular feature of this model is the strength envelope. So we represent that in principal stress space. So uh, major principal stress 
against minor principal stress. And we get a frictional failure envelope, as you get in all soils. I'm trying to do a dashed line here, not easy. There we go. That represents the, the friction angle. It's not quite the friction angle that you see there because it's not more stress space, it's slightly different stress space, but it looks very similar. I've plotted it like this because this is how the model is formulated. When we have a non-stabilized aggregate, we can get a slightly non-linear failure envelope like that. Now this happens in dense, coarse aggregates. It's due to dilatancy in the aggregate, so the particles are, are very dense. In order to shear, they have to uh, dilate a little bit. Uh, that requires a little bit of energy to, uh, to cause that, and that's what causes that uh, curvature there and that little, bit, um, uh, that little bit of extra strength above the frictional uh, envelope. So that's the non-stabilized failure envelope in blue. But when we do tests on a mechanically stabilized aggregate at different confining stresses, we can see the additional uh, higher, the, the strength that we get, and that actually looks like a, a much um, more non-linear envelope, much more curved. And we get something like that. So that is the mechanically stabilized failure envelope. Uh, so the area between these two represents that additional strength that we see here at all the different uh, confining stress levels. So um, we have various parameters that define um, this slope here for friction, the, the, in the, um, the offset here for the non-stabilized, the offset for the stabilized, and also some parameters that define uh, that curvature there. But that's unique, that model. That's the only one that can create this sort of behavior. Not only does it do, do that, it also takes into account the, the fact that at the level of the geogrid, we get the maximum strength. So that failure envelope actually applies at that level. We have an influence zone of the geogrid. So as you move away from the geogrid, so about that far away, so typically about 35 centimeters away, then we get to the non-stabilized failure envelope. We're far enough away from the geogrid that it's now behaving like a non-stabilized material. And as we go between the two, it, the, the strength changes gradually from this maximum to the non-stabilized value. So what the constitutive model also does is it adjusts the strength as you move away from the geogrid. So we get a, a linear interpolation between the two failure envelopes. So those are the two important um, aspects of this model. It's the non-linear failure envelope uh, to take into account the mechanical stabilization. It's the, the extra interlock that needs more energy to overcome the dilatancy within the aggregate. That's why we get this enhanced curvature in the failure envelope. So it's, it's that failure envelope plus it's the variation uh, with height above the grid. So uh, this model is available um, for the leading um, uh, finite element analysis uh, softwares uh, and it's available to use to, to model um, uh, tensile stabilizing uh, geogrids. Okay, so uh, you can get in touch with us if you want to get uh, a, a copy of that model. So um, I hope that answers your question, Sandy, how we model um, mechanical stabilization in FEA. That's all for this episode of Tensile Ground Coffee. Thanks for watching and see you next time.